First of all, I'd like to ask a question about your collaboration. You have worked on many films together, and that is um, actually quite unusual in documentary film because you know we work, we go and work on different projects, and then we always engaged in research and doing our own film. So, how do you manage to to do that together all these years? Um, well, the the fact that we collaborate is because we 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 are uh, very good friends, and that already helps uh, a lot. And we actually became friends. We met in in the film school in in Cuba, where we both studied. And um, yeah, the fact that we studied together it definitely helps to share a certain background and, and yeah. It, and um, the fact that we kind of exchange roles sometimes, so uh, it might happen that you have a, a project of your own and you are thinking about it or researching, and, but in the meantime, while you're doing that job, your friend is probably in that point uh, with his project a little bit more advanced, so it's ready to start to work, and you say, okay, let's, let's, let's do that together. And in the meantime, I'll keep on thinking about my future project. Actually, these two, f these two films, we kind of did them simultaneously. I remember that uh, Mauro went on the ship shooting. While he was shooting, I was getting funding for my own film. When he came back from the shooting, from his journey, we started uh, editing. We interrupted the editing to shoot a little bit of my film. We went back to the editing of his film when we finished it, we went back to my shooting. So, yeah, it's kind of a simultaneous thing, and the fact that we we, we enjoy doing these things together, I'm, I'm I feel available for this, and because uh, if, so, if he invites me to to get on board of his own project, I'm going to enjoy it, and uh, I feel available. I might not feel as available, maybe for an, a different thing, but in this case, I and I suppose we share this. <laughs> Uh, first of all, uh, thank you, thank you for coming. Um, in, in Spain, there is an expression. I don't know if it exists uh, here in, in Hong Kong, but we don't know if it's first the chicken or the egg. Uh, and uh, I think that the people who uh, who went to this school in Cuba, bueno, uh, us and uh, some other friends who work uh, with with us or who worked with us a lot of time, uh, we we share a lot of uh, things uh, about life. Before going there, it was an interesting encounter because we started to talk with some of the people in the school and we started to feel very close and very yes and very quickly. No, uh, and it's also a kind of politic of the school to to do to work to do projects together and to change our role in the projects of the other. And and it's a it's a communism country <laughs> a little bit also, and they like to to do things in a very horizontal way. No, and I think it's that who attracted us also to for going there and. And uh, yes, very quickly we started to do a group. Uh, the producer of our film, our films was was an, is a an student of that school also. Uh, uh, the director of the other film, uh, Arrayanos, is also a friend of that school. And yes, all of us we did a kind of uh, rotations because we are friends, because we share a lot of things, because uh, yes, and because I think we for all of us cinema is more than than a job. No, is a is a way to be in life and and to uh, learn. And well, we're going to talk about that. Uh, Later, no. Um, I'm curious why Cuba, and when you were at the film school, did they also teach you fictional films and documentary films, both genre together, side by side? <laughs> we, 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 yes, we never did. Uh, in the school, in general terms, they don't like to do the difference a lot, and especially us. We haven't like less to do the difference. No? Uh, uh, we never talk about fiction or documentary. For us, it's, it's about doing films. Sometimes you are more passive. You adapt to the reality, and sometimes you you react to to reality and you change, you transform things that you have. A, and it's always a mix of all of these. No, and it's for us. It's not more. It's not so much about documenting something. Documenting. It's more about the the relation between us and the thing. That, uh, the place that we, we, that we're going to work. No, we want to go to a place, 
because uh, we have a deep desire to go to a place. We don't know exactly why sometimes, but we feel there are the, there are the, coordin the coordinates to work that attract uh, us. And then we start this process of exchanging things, exchanging things with, uh, with uh, the, the things we have in front of us and, and try to understand what, what is happening, uh, where we are going. And it's always a kind of a pulse between uh, document and fiction, uh, ourselves and the reality we have in front of us. And what, why Cuba in... in, in oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, why Cuba? Well, in my, in, in my case, is, it, it sounded, at, uh, sounded like an attractive uh, adventure. And it's, it's a film school that at least in the Latin American or Ibero-American, including Spain or Spanish-talking countries, it has a really good uh, reputation, this film school. And I, have, I, I had heard of it... Uh, for a while, when I decided to to study film, filmmaking, and it sounded uh, like a nice combo in terms of uh, f f studying film in a in a good uh, film school with a good reputation, but also getting to have a life experience that would be much more interesting for me than if I stay in Spain studying filmmaking, where things are a little bit more predictable, or I, f I kind of feel. Uh, safe and uh, so yeah again it's, it's, it's funny because it's similar to what happens when we make films that the experience it's, uh, it's important to put ourselves in a place or in a place where we don't have control mm -hmm. we, we like to take this to filmmaking no we try to, we like filming in places that in a way we are a little bit lost so, so we might learn something uh, while we do the film and when we chose uh, the place where we're going to study, this is also involved. I want to study in a place where I don't know. So, so <laughs> the adventure element yeah. is very important, right? <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So it's like uh, using cinema as a means for discovery of the world and also of yourself, mm -hmm. right? So, and it's interesting. I, I looked into your um, bi bio a little bit, Google a little bit, and more. <laughs> you you studied engineering. And, and Manuel, you studied communication arts, right? Or, and painting, did you study painting? painting? No. no, no, not painting, oh, painting is you. Okay, so, um, so from there, then you decided cinema is, is the way to go, right? <laughs> For both of you, yeah? yeah? Uh -huh. What is the attraction in cinema? I, I, I wanna ask because a lot of our students here, um, uh, audience here are journalism students and some of them will take, documentary courses, so this is something that they could relate to, perhaps, yeah. In my case, uh, it's strange, I think uh, normally, and I think it happens quite often, the people uh, reach cinema always in, in second or third place, no? it's, a, it's a kind of indirect, uh, I, I also teach in the university, sometimes I have uh, some students who, who know very early that they're gonna do films, but normally they come from another uh, career or studies, uh, in my case, I was a, a very passionate for cinema since I was a child, and I, I look at a lot of cinema, but I never thought, it's strange because it's obvious that these films, there, there is people who do these films. <laughs> but it, it took a little bit of time for me to understand there is people who are these films. No? And one day I started to think, uh, after studying engineer and fine arts, uh, why I don't do movies? Because I, I like a lot of cinema since I was a child. And I thought, ah, there, is, there is people who do these uh, things. No? And I started to, uh, to invest and to, to, to go to Cuba. And, and also because I, I think uh, it was a way to, to, to uh, where life and work m are always mixed. No? And uh, I wanted to, to follow this intuition that cinema and life are always a little bit together. No? Uh, it's not a job that you go to work and then you finish and you return at home and it's a job, they pay you for that. It's a, pl it's a place that you have to... It, it, it's also, it also happens with a painter because my, 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 my depth was between cinema and painter. It was pretty quite clear that I will not work at, as an engineer for me. But painter is also a place that you have to invest a lot. As, well, maybe as engineer too. Eh? I think as someone who was a creative... Uh, uh, engineer uh, work, uh, is, he has to invest a lot, uh, but in cinema was more interesting for me because it's a way to um, to be with, to, to share with people and reality, no? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. 
Um, well, um, should we talk about your film that they just shot, saw, uh, Dead Slow Ahead? Now, uh, the film is, as we said, that won a lot of awards. And in, in an interview, um, I think, Moro, you, you mentioned that real documentary and real fiction don't exist. They're just labels, right? And, and there's, it, it, it really is also um, applies to, to the film that, that we just saw. And then another thing I find is very interesting about the film is that the images itself had this transcendental kind of, how, how, how should I say, it, it, you know, it, it draws you into the place, but at the same time, it transcends your experience from this place, out of this place. You know, it takes you away. So can you explain a little bit of when you shot the film and when you edit the film, was that the intention and how does that come about? Mm -hmm. I, I forgot the beginning of the question, sorry. Uh, I just, you said uh, I, the difference fiction. between, between yes, fiction and real yes. documents, real fiction we don't, uh, just, don't exist, yes. As you, as you said, and as I said a little bit before, uh, uh, we don't uh, trust a lot in that uh, kind of labels. No? It's a way to speak uh, quickly, and it's, it's, there is a part that it's true. There, there are films that are a little bit more documentary and others that are a little bit more fiction, but there are a lot that are... Lit I think it's more a kind of gradient. No? There is a kind of absolute label that is fiction. I think there is any film there that is completely a fiction. The thing that I could imagine that is more close to absolute fiction is maybe a 3D film uh, did by synthesis. I don't know, it's the thing that I could imagine more in a fiction way, but also in that case there is always uh, the document of something, no? the document of a technology on a precious moment, someone who in, in invented that history. And in the document, in the other side, I, the, the most document, uh, absolute document that I could imagine. I don't know what is it. We were talking about that in the, in yeah. the dinner. Maybe it's a vigilance Maybe camera. Maybe the surveillance, or, a surveillance but, camera, no? but we, even without that, really interfering. But with even the, that, it's, no, it's a certain point of view with a certain technology. And it's, it's, we did some choices no, for, and we, we, we uh, fragmented the reality and we decided to, to close, well, to take only a part. No? And I think between these two poles, these absolute two poles that don't, at the end don't exist, we have a lot of films, no? And uh, maybe for us the most interesting uh, cinema is this, this film who, who uses a little bit things that comes a little bit from fiction and others from documentary, and we mix them uh, with a lot of uh, freedom. We don't, yeah. we don't trust at all in, in, in purity or... Uh, no, we, I, I, yeah, I think yeah. We, we, you might hear us say films all the time instead of uh, documentaries, uh, as as we talk, uh, because we we really think of them as films more than more than documentaries in the way that uh, it's not our will to document a, a specific reality. But I think I can I can understand also why people call it a documentary. I suppose this is uh, conditioned by the fact that instead of uh, our starting point, normally, instead of being a written script, uh, it's normally an attraction to a certain thing that already exists uh, in reality and that calls us for some reasons that we might not even understand very well at the beginning why it is, but we feel this call of adventure eventually, or uh, we, yeah, we just find something that is trigger, trigger something. But that doesn't mean that we want to describe this reality or to explain it at all. It's just an invitation to explore a certain domain. So we identify a domain or a context that exists in reality. But once we start uh, working with it, we don't feel uh, anymore like we need to explain this reality. It's just a starting point that triggers certain ideas and certain... Uh, uh, certain uh, poetic images that uh, that we're going to explore with 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 the work we we do. So yeah, we might start with with reality, and that's probably what invites people to categorize the films as documentaries. I'm, I don't know; it's it's fine, but but it's but it's but it's true that we 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 tend to think that the the, the border between fiction and documentary filmmaking that kind of that border is really rich. 
in yes. the exchange of. Uh, I think it's more about uh, to, to recognize uh, a little bit the film that you are, uh, that you imagine it a little bit or you thought. You, you start to work in the film, you have some ideas or a place that, as, as Manolo said, that. Uh, invite you to go or you, you have the desire to go to that place because I think uh, in an in a unconscious way we, you know there is you want to learn something important for you there or something about the others or throughout you or, or the country and uh, if you follow the, this process you in, an, in, a, in an honest way and, and you work hard you, I think you, you will understand after all the process why you was there and why you was uh, you feel this desire to go there and and you could be transformed no? in the process. And, and as, as we said before, life and cinema is, is always together for us. And if you don't have this transforming experience, probably we will not do a film. So everything goes, goes together. No? And at the end, we don't matter if it's... Uh, sometimes we, we, part, we change the things in the reality. We say, for, for example, to our characters what they have to say, or we change the light, or we, we, we manage with the reality. And sometimes we are more in a passive way uh, waiting things that happen. I think it's more a, a, a matter about uh, that. When you are active, when you are passive, a little bit, because uh, even when you are passive, you are active, but you are more in a reception way, and when you are more... And when, when you let the hazard, the hazard, you say in English? The chance. The chance mm, sometimes you control everything and you don't let the chance to... The, to to let the chance to, to transform the things on, and when you don't want to, you are very directive and you don't let... The, it's more about that for, for us, I think, or for me. But certainly, because you asked before how did it feel to work with images that uh, refer to a reality but also transcend that, that reality, we 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 approach the work with the with the with the freedom that if if uh, what we see if the facts suggest something else, uh, which is probably in our imagination, we we feel completely free to push the reality in the direction of our imagination. We don't feel like we need to be uh, strictly committed to the facts. The, like, so the facts are really a starting point, but uh, yeah. In, in documentary, things change without your planning, right? So, for example, in the scene in uh, Deslo Head, where you know suddenly they're saying, "Oh, water is coming in! Water is coming in!" Now, you didn't expect that, hmm. and then you you planted that moment. I think somewhere, almost like thirty minutes into the film. I mean, I'm not sure if, if I have a call, you, the editor. Um, and so, you know, there is sudden drama, you know, but then, but then somehow that drama just kind of like slowly just kind of disappear, right? <laughs> That's what I mean by that transcendent uh, part of the film, whereas, you know, you don't really follow those kind of very straight you know, uh, documentary or fictional kind of rules, and you just kind of like let it flow, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think it's a, it's a, this, this example that you said is a, is a good uh, point about for for illustrating what we are saying. No, for example, the, the accident happened in reality, but it happened in a different way that uh, that that is showing the film. No, uh, for example, this shot where when the guy comes and, and take the fo the phone. Uh, it was uh, put it in a scene. It was uh, it was completely directed, uh, but the accident happened in that way two weeks before. And I noted in my notebook. Ah, I, today we had an accident. Water entered in the in the ship. Maybe we, we, we I can do something with that uh, later. And when when we reached the port and we find they found uh, the water uh, wet the the what is the mojar. Uh, Made, made the wheat made, uh, wet, made, uh, made the wheat wet. Yes. Uh, and they started to throw it to the sea and it took a lot of time, it took a lot of time, uh, weeks throwing the wet to the sea. I remember it, how the thing happened two weeks before, in the middle of the sea when they had the new, and I, I thought ah, it could be interesting to take that again. No? And I asked them if they can do it uh, 
this thing in different ways. No? And kind, again, kind of like a reenactment, reenacting that scene. Yes. Reacting the, and uh, the, 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 the idea of the scene come from the reality because I spent time there and I was uh, attentive when I was uh, alert or watching the things. Then I, when, I, when I directed the scene, I was inspired by the, by the reality. No? And then the, 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 the way I show the, one of the images of the accident, of the consequence of the accidents, were more in a passive way, no? more, more in a, I adapt to their, their movement. No? And the other one, I put the things in the in movement, inspired by the real, and then I adapted to the real. No? And things crosses without any problem. No? Bueno. Mm. And then there is some scene. There, I remember this particular scene was a little bit uh, um, troubling us because it's it's there, suddenly the film becomes narrative. Suddenly there is an event. Yeah. So far in the film, everything was more contemplative and. And suddenly there is a strong event that somehow uh, it, it, it seems to to ask for a development of a cause and consequence, no casual cause and consequence. Um, but it's in these sort of films, it's it's a risky thing that when 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 you become too narrative, sometimes the narration kidnaps the the the, 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 the ambiguity and the mysteriousness of images. So images become uh, slaves to the narrative, and we try to avoid that. Uh, if, if, if we focus too much on narrating events, events um, we might uh, impoverish, impoverish the, in, uh, like make, to make poor. Uh, uh, to steal, steal from the images their capacity of taking you somewhere else, of uh, uh, being transcendental, and so so the, they they become like little um, slaves for the narration, and we try to to avoid, we try to avoid this because it's not that much about the facts that we're talking about, but uh, some something else, no? So. So, which means yeah. the integrity of the images for you is foremost, is the most important thing for that story to unfold. And you want to have that images to, to tell the story. Yeah, without... It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a mix, uh, the yeah. perfect balance. When we try to find the perfect balance between uh, when we, con we have to build, we have to build uh, some conducts to the, to the meaning of the film, then they have to be concrete. Because if, if the, the, the spectator has to follow the things that you try to explain, and it has to be very real and concrete sometimes, and sometimes, and in the between of these uh, signs that build a little bit your path, mm. you have you let a lot of place to the spectator for completing the sense of the and and they, they, they have it's more uh, the, the images have to contain a kind of a, something uh, a kind of veracity of authenticity, no. Mm. And like that, the spectator has the impression of the real, of the reality, and he will feel uh, his own emotions. And each, uh, every 10 minutes, 5, 10, 12, I don't know, <laughs> there is not a mathematic rule. You have a sign, a very clear sign. Mm -hmm. All the spectators will almost read the same thing, no? And they, they could uh, follow what you try to say, no? You let um, the perfect balance between uh, the place you let the spectator to to dream and to const to build his own sensations and impressions, and the place and the signs that have to to mark a, a path, no, like a like a white stones uh, path, no. You you let some white stones like that the the spectator can uh, orientate himself in the film. If the if the distance between the stones is very long, very distant. You probably gonna lose the spectator because he will not understand what you are trying to say. It becomes very like a cloud, no? Uh, and if it's very, there are too many stones and they are very close one to the others. Maybe it's boring, no? Because you are directing too much the um, the sense of the film and you are uh, manipulating a little bit. Uh, and our films are more about uh, uh, provocating questions more than giving answers, no? It's more about uh, how you look the world. The, the confrontation between ourselves, what we think and we feel about the world, and something that is happening in it's, it's because of that. I think also it's not a document of the of the of the place we are shooting. It's more about the, the the encounter between us and our ideas and our feelings and something that is there, 
who attracted us and who and, and that we need for 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 meeting ourselves also no? mm -hmm. uh, how how many of you have seen the sea that stares at us from afar that was screened uh, a few days ago how many of you have seen oh okay not too many so um maybe we can start talk about that film because that film is in the film festival mm -hmm. and I know you have brought some clips here yeah. to show, right? Do you want to uh, maybe introduce the film? And yeah. It's, um, it's kind of like a continuation of, of, uh, of the other films that you've done, you think? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm, well, in a way, I suppose, yes, uh, because the, 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 the films that I edited, normally I edit with friends, like Mauro or... or and others, and uh, as we were saying before, it's always like a, a really um, uh, co collective kind of uh, working and, and, and horizontal, and the way you you get involved in it, it's it's really uh, intense, and uh, it takes time. We take time to work. For example, that's Law Head. We edited it in 12 months. Uh, well, a whole year of, uh, of editing. We had a lot of material. It's films that we don't, we don't really write. Uh, so the, the we write a lot. We, we, we write, write a lot, lot to, to get funding. <laughs> that, that's <laughs> low ahead. You have 40 versions, right? I Something bet. like that. Something uh, like that, around right? Around 40 <laughs> versions, yeah. And we had 180 <laughs> hours of uh, rushes. Yeah. 40 versions. 180 hours of rushes, something like that. Yeah, many, many different versions, and and this is these are films that don't really exist in our mind before making them. In our mind, there is maybe a desire. Uh, There's a certain desire that uh, we, we wouldn't be able of verbalizing it uh, very much before making b making the film. No, as we say before, we find a, a place or people or a situation that calls us, and then we go and we find the way that we find the film while while we make it. So the editing process is really a writing writing process and uh, finding finding uh, the film and shaping the film. Uh, in a way that it's normally, and, and this probably connects with your earlier uh, question because you were saying something about formal explorations, and I, th and I think there's something of this in, in both our films that we try to, to... Our films are somehow a composition, that it's a, an invitation for an experience. It shouldn't, we, we don't make films that could be translated into a text, I think. So, so the importance of images and sounds are, are vital. Images are not used to illustrate an idea. Yeah. Images themselves become uh, the possibility of an experience and the sound too. We work a lot with the sound also. While we are editing image, we are already editing a lot of sound too. We don't leave it to the, for the end of the process. We do it in the simultaneously. And um, I, I have the feeling that we're shaping a, a a film that is going to be somehow an experience, an immersive experience. So I, I had this experience while editing Mauro's film and other films before, and uh, when I'm working with my film, I suppose it's an organic continuation of, of this way of approaching uh, uh, filmmaking. It's a way that has a lot to do with, with a certain process that we like to, to, to experience and uh, to give time to, to it. Uh, the, the, the new word now everybody is using is exp experiential. Everything is like experiential teaching or learning or anything. So your film is kind of like that. It's, it's like experiential. You, you, you place the audience into that experience of being in that ship or in the, the film, the sea is like in this beach area, you, you bring us over there to experience what it's like. The waves, the people who live there, the sun, the wind, and everything. So, yeah. yeah. Mm. And, uh, I'm, 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 th I'm just thinking now that may maybe from the clips we brought, I have the feeling that there is one, one clip that may connect to some of the things that we are talking here, which is the, the clip uh, number three. <laughs> who, who's, number three? Who's, who's in charge of it's in the clip number three. three. Yeah. Yeah. I think it. It. Uh, I don't know. I'm guessing, eh? but I. Th but I think it could help to connect some of the things we we're talking, and could relate to to the ways we. Yeah, we approach. We approach the the process. 
Um, meantime, meantime, I don't know if yeah, it's going to take a little bit of... Yeah. Uh, at, at, at the same time, I think uh, it's a kind of a logic uh, a step to go in that direction. I think uh, the, the cinema, uh, cinema since the beginning and, and almost in the last uh, second part of the century, is searching a kind of a plus of reality, no? And the directors uh, go take the actors, in, even in fiction, eh? uh, the actors who are gonna make uh, of him, himself, themselves in reality. Or so they, they start to f try to find uh, ways to give a, an impression of, um, a, a bigger, bigger impression of reality, no? And they're gonna use characters that, that gonna do of themselves, of, or they're gonna use a, uh, part of their bio life, of their life. They're gonna write episodes of the film inspired by events of the real life, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm even the, the most interesting director for me in the modernity of cinema, but also from the beginning, eh, um, Flaherty, the, the fathers of the documentary, also interested in how to uh, give an impression of reality, uh, and a stronger impression of reality. No? And I think the logical uh, step today uh, there is this kind of industry cinema now that has millions of money yeah. and uh, the, the, the way they do films is very different. And uh, as small filmmakers as us, we only have this opportunity not to live... Um, I think if we, tr if we want to... If we, the only way to do something that could have a, 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 a stronger... Um, uh, well, I, don't, I, don't feel the I don't find the name... Um, peso weight, and, and, and a kind of weight it, it is, is, the, is in that way, no? A little bit uh, living the experience, very an immersive experience, and try to reach something valuable, no? And to, okay. to, to, to we, print we, it. We should see clip number three now. Uh, just, just to contextualize for those who didn't uh, watch watch the film, the see is the Saras from afar. Just give a little bit of a context. Um, the film. Uh, the film takes place in a in a national protected uh, park area in south of Spain, uh, where nobody lives. It's a national, it's an unspoiled uh, territory, with the exception of uh, four men uh, living there in their little cabins or huts. Uh, they live out of fishing. It's a, it's a really isolated, almost hermit kind of lifestyle that changes quite strongly in the summertime because in the summertime a lot of holiday makers go to that beach but the rest of the year is really deserted um, and it's lonely men living there they, they don't even shape a community uh, they're even isolated between themselves it's funny it's only four men and they could shape something like a family, but instead of that, uh, they, they don't get along very well in between them. So they are isolated from society and in between themselves also isolated, kind of. And um, yeah, I, I, I brought three clips and the one we're going to show now, I think could relate to some of the things we are discussing now. So yeah, Mauro was uh, talking before about the this encounter between reality and our desire as, uh, as filmmakers. Sometimes we want things to be in a certain way that respond to our own sense of whatever, uh, beauty or whatever. And if, sometimes if things don't respond to this desire, we push them. We push reality to make it similar to our own ideal or to our own imagination. And um, yeah, after observing, I mean, the, the, this 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 work of making a film like this starts with a lot of uh, observing, taking the time to taking the time to to share days with the characters that are that are the, with the people that I want to shoot, and uh, in that time that I, that I spend with them, I I observe certain things that I that I like and that I want to rescue these these elements for the film. That sometimes are a little bit uh, subtle things. It's not the uh, events on their lives, but it's just aspects of the about the way they about the way they they spend the hours, about the way they relate to the territory, about the way they that they look at the the context where they are and um, 
so I watched them for, for, for a long time before actually shooting. And I know later on when we are actually shooting that certain things are not going to happen the way I wanted to, to happen. So it's interesting that sometimes you need to go through, a, through something which is fake to reveal, to reveal a truth. This is, this is a sequence, the one where they sing in. The last, the last man singing is one of the main characters of the, of the, of the film. But he's a lonely man. And then most of the time we were shooting him when he was on his own. So when, when one, it's, so we, we kind of observe aspects of the way he moves, the way he, he walks, the, the way he, he is in place and time. But uh, I wanted to get something else from him, from what I know of him, from what I have observed, and the sort of situations that, that could take place. So we organized this meeting of the guards, uh, the, 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 the man uh, drawing at the beginning and the, the guy who plays guitar. Uh, they are guards in this national park. The funny thing is that they are not the real guards of the national park because the real ones didn't want to collaborate. So I brought uh, two friends of mine to to play the roles of the guards. And uh, but it doesn't matter because in in their in their job, their real jobs in in life are not so different from what they had to do in here. So I tried to look for something which is similar to what they are going to have to reenact. And uh, so we create a situation, we create like a frame, but whatever is going to happen within that frame, it's a little bit out of our control. So then it becomes a documentary. It's a stage situation. We brought the guitar, we brought the two men, we bought them two uniforms. <laughs> uh, we come together to this place, but then we start sharing the time, sharing the afternoon and the evening. We drink together wine, filmmakers and characters. Uh, we get kind of relaxed, we bring the guitar out, and they start singing. Uh, we, we knew this could happen easily because I know that the main character really likes to sing, and I lo know what kind of music he likes. And one of the guards, I chose him because he knows how to play guitar and, and, and sing. No? So, in a way, you, you identify certain ingredients from reality, and you know that as, if you put them together, something unexpected is going to happen. Chemical reaction. Yeah. Right? And, the, and the song that they sing, is that a real song or they were making up the song as they were singing? No, it's, it's a real one, quite popular. They sang oh, a yeah? lot of songs. Okay. They sang a lot of songs, but when they sang this one, mm. we, oh, I thought it could be an appropriate one to, to somehow portrait, make a portrait of this character. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we asked them to sing it a couple of extra times so we could have other points of view for cutting later on, no? other, other shots is uh, another uh, very normal strategy to, to... Some of them, we took them uh, later, even later, without the song. The, 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 so the shot of the guy uh, smiling, laughing, to the, reacting to the... This yeah. kind of complement films, that, shots that we have to, to, have, uh, that we have to have in all the sequences, no? Yeah. The funny thing is that out of all the sequences that we have in the film of this man, the old, the old man who sings at the end, I think this is the one that uh, shows, that is more re revealing about him. So it's really interesting that you need to put a mask on nature for nature to reveal itself, no? You need to, you need to use sometime a fake uh, mask to put it on reality, so reality actually manages to, to, to reveal something uh, otherwise sometimes it's in front of the camera sometimes things things don't happen and if you if you are too passive well you might have the time to be a fly on the wall no and to watch and watch observe observe and sometimes you, you might be lucky and things will reality if, if you are confident uh, about reality reality might respond to your confidence and it, it might give you something but sometimes it doesn't happen and uh, the funny thing is that through, through this false uh, situation that I created, I, I finally got the essence of this character. And it, some, somehow, I mean, without the context of the film, this probably doesn't mean much, what I'm saying now, but in the context of the film, this is a sequence that finally you, you see the, the, a little bit a glimpse of the soul of the character. Before this sequence, he's a figure, and you observe certain things, certain details, details that are relevant and interesting, but in this moment, you kind of get a glimpse of his soul, of his way of being in the, in the world. 
And something kind of similar happens with the first bit of the clip. One of the first impressions I have about this uh, place was how the, the isolation and the fact that it was a very masculine world. It's only men living there. And I always question myself, how, how do they do? There's no family, there's no couples, there's no... So, and I wonder especially how the young guy, that young boy that we see, is, is the only young, young uh, out of these lonely men, he's the only young one. And, and I always wonder, doesn't he dream of a different life? Because here they are so isolated, surrounded by dunes. Uh, it's, 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 a very, it's a romantic place for us who come from outside, but for, for the ones who live there, it can be kind of lonely. And I thought that probably the old men are very used to it and they don't question themselves about this choice of life. But I thought that the young guy probably did. And I spoke with him sometimes trying to, to get what, what's, what's his position about being so isolated, away from other guys of his age, away of the possibility of being in a town, in a village, getting to meet girls. Uh, falling in love or whatever. So I chose, one, I picked one girl from the closest town and I brought her here. And they met the day of the shooting of this sequence. They didn't know each other before. But in the film, they play like they are friends. Like she comes visiting and they are friends. This is fake. But, and we did this two, two times. First, we did with a different girl and there was no chemistry, it didn't work. But then I wrote this girl, and he was like, he was, when she was not listening, he was like, I really like her. He was like, I mean, this girl, I, she's beautiful, I like her. So, uh, thanks to this, something real happened. He really liked the, the girl. He doesn't spend time with the girls at all in, in the year. So this was a, a very exciting uh, moment and thing happening, the fact of... Um, so it's interesting, again, through something fictional, s something real or something true mm. pops up. And in this case, I think in his face you can see something, a uh, certain uh, emotion uh, that is true, it's not fake, he's not really acting. And then uh, I told her to leave the... I told her he's going to put his hand on top of you when he does that, wait a little bit and then leave. But he didn't know, I gave this instruction to her, but not to him. Oh. So when she leaves, he's a little bit like, oh, maybe she didn't like what... Uh, and, and again, through, through something that you stage, you, you get a, a real reaction. And, yeah, and uh, this somehow connects a little bit with what we were saying before. So it's not that much about actually documenting facts, but you find a place, people, a certain reality that you find interesting for various reasons, and then you try to trigger certain things to come to the surface, and you might need mm -hmm. to use... Right. It's interesting some, because yeah. um, the Italians, right after the war, they, they were doing films, uh, they you know, they were hiring non-actors, whereas the director would have a script a story, they hire non-actors and say, now in this scene, you are playing this person, you're playing this person, and you're having an argument, so I want you guys to argue. So they were shooting films that way with non-professional actors. But then the director had, you know, had, had control of what the story is about. You know, and then the chemistry will happen, and then the spontaneity will happen. You are kind of doing that too, but in the kind of framework of a documentary. So when you apply, let's say, for, uh, to enter your film in film festivals. They always have a category. Do you, what category do you enter it in? It's, this is uh, really uncomfortable each, each time. Sometimes they don't ask for a category and then I feel really relieved <laughs> uh, because it's, for me it's a, it's, a, it's a film and uh, I do understand that it's probably closer to documentary in certain aspects mm -hmm. and uh, the sequence that we watch now maybe are a little bit more staged. Some of the things in the film are a little bit more uh, spontaneous, observed things, sometimes not, it's, I don't know what it is. <laughs> I really don't know. It's not, it's, it's really, I shouldn't make this choice of labeling it as a documentary yeah. of fiction. It's up to the viewer. I mean, if you watch it and you think it's a documentary, that's fine. I'm, I don't want to interfere in whatever your perception is. Uh, I, I, I don't know, I, if I have the chance, I try to explain uh, 
<laughs> can you watch it and then you decide if you want to consider it for the documentary or fiction category? Maybe it will be a and fictional documentary. <laughs> I suppose, I suppose, I, I don't yeah. know, it's really... Then we, yeah, you were talking about the neorealists in, in, in Italy after the war and before we were having a, a, a little talk and we thought uh, we were remembering and I, sometimes I teach also in the, in the Cuban film school where I was a student. Now I, I go to teach a workshop each, each year and I always show them uh, some Lumiere films. And uh, you know the workers coming out of the factory is a, probably you know, one of the first after the train arrival, one of the first... Uh, films ever made supposed to be an innocent uh, document of, of reality and it's funny to know that there's like four different versions of the same shot shot in different seasons not even on the same day like doing it again and again and again but coming back in summertime coming back in autumn coming back in winter to make the same shot and uh, and you can realize that they add little elements to these workers coming out of the factory which is supposed to be like a really brute, uh, real fact or something happening. But that's a good example to, to point at this combination or encounter between reality and desire, because they might not be satisfied, the Lumiere brothers, I mean, with the way that they come out. They might find it a little bit slow. <laughs> so for the second take, they ask the workers maybe, could you come out a little bit faster? And maybe for the third take, they, they, they throw a dog in the, in, the, um, in the situation because this dog, it creates an unexpected uh, appearance that is going to give extra life to that 45 second shot. So, um, yeah, there's, there's so many ways of uh, dealing with the unexpected and whatever you control. But it's true that we, 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 we like, even when we do fiction, we like true things to come out and reveal. Even if we do like a real fiction, when it looks um, too, too fake, uh, yeah, no, no, it's, it's, I think it's important to always tree or something true to, to, come, to come to the surface. Yeah. It's a discussion without uh, end. Uh, for example, me in the, at the university, I teach also about uh, this matter, and I spend uh, nearly 30, 40 hours each year trying to demonstrate that uh, this uh, difference at the end doesn't exist. No? And we have several examples in the history of cinema that are incredible. For example, now I, I am thinking in Chaplin. Chaplin was someone who controlled everything, everything. He wrote absolutely everything. But at the same time, and, and he, he, maybe he, they did, he did uh, 40, 50 times the same shot. But at the same time, he wanted to record always all the shots because he knows the accident, that the accident could happen and it, ha it will happen in a, in a way that we can't uh, uh, fictionalize, no? And, it, it, and he knows it's so interesting, the hazard and the accident, and as, as so important as the idea of the shot. And, and there's another example that I like a lot to explain in, the, in, the, in my class, uh, in my university classes, is about what happened in the, after the, well, no, in the middle of the Second War and a little bit after. It was completely crazy because we had uh, through images that a lot of people thought they are fictions. See, the, 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 the army, the US Army was recording a lot of images for trying to demonstrate to the world that the things that are happening are happening for real. And they have to record these images in a way to show and to demonstrate that this, these things are happening for real. And they have a kind of rules for having how to record these images. And at the same time, we have images that everybody thought they are real and they were put it in fiction. For example, the Nazis uh, uh, tried to demonstrate how Jew Jewish live in a very unsafe uh, way in the ghettos. And they, ha they tried to find an excuse for doing what they did. How, look how they, do, how they live. They live really in, they have very bad habits. And we have to do something for, uh, and they did a lot of uh, fiction images that do, and a lot of people thought they, they were uh, document, uh, real f images of that, no? And at the same time, we have real images that a lot of people thought they are, they are document. It is completely crazy how, mix, how things yeah. mix, no? In the history yeah. of, of humanity also. And, okay. And, uh, um, we have another half an hour, and I'm sure you are dying to ask some questions. So please raise your hand, and uh, please wait for the microphone, because we will need to um, translate that into Chinese. 
right, so um, as mentioned by Nancy for the Q&A section, um, in order to facilitate the simultaneous interpretation, um, please speak into the microphone and address yourself before asking your question. And um, yes, does anyone have any questions? Please raise your hand. You can also use Chinese. Okay. Um, I wonder uh, if the real character they watch the movie, what do they feel? Mm, my my characters mm. the, from my film, they they still haven't watched the the film. <laughs> Why not? No, well, because there's going to be a because the film got got selected to 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 participate on a on a festival in in South Spain, uh, kind of near to where they live. So I think that would be a, a good, uh, a nice uh, premiere for them, so they can come to the cinema to watch it there. But I will think about probably the possibility of first having a screening in private with them, because they might be a little bit shy if they watch it for the first time with a lot of people. So maybe they might want to know in advance what is going to be in the film. So we watch it in private. I think we might do that, and then later on, they, they, they could come to the screen, but they have watched some sequences. They haven't watched the whole film, but sometimes I brought on a um, on a little uh, the tablet and a, uh, uh, some sequences when I was editing. Uh, sometimes while editing, I went to visit them for <laughs> I don't know for what I was lost in the editing, and sometimes I went to visit them. I don't know, just, just so I could keep in touch with with the no with the characters of of the film because the editing room is also an isolated place and sometimes you so i i went visiting them and i show them some clips some sequences and uh, the guy singing he got really emotional when 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 he saw two sequences this one he saw this sequence and he really liked it he he yeah he 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 got really emotional he got he even cried a little bit a tiny because they i don't know i suppose because they live very isolated and suddenly to to see themselves in in a in a in a film it might move something inside i don't know and uh, the, the other ones the the girl is also really excited i i also showed her the sequences and she's really excited and then the the young guy he 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 finds it funny. He laughs. It's funny. He's he. It's funny that he was not really aware. In a way, I think he was really uh, naive when we were shooting. He was not really aware of what what the hell was this. And and when he saw when he saw himself in the sequence, it it's like he can't believe it. He he finds it funny because he. When people are not related to filmmaking, the editing, no, and the fact that what you shoot one day is connected to a shot that you shoot in a different day, or whatever, these things are a little bit disturbing for them, no. So he was a little bit surprised that things shot in different days or different weeks were shaping one sequence with a unity of time and space, no. And and this is kind of disturbing for them. Uh, but yeah, it's. I want to show them the, the whole film because it, that's that's kind of the end of a of a process, no? Uh, to see what it's, it's, I think it's going to be interesting for them to 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 see themselves through my eyes, because of course what you see in the screen is not exactly them. It's a no. It's again, it's a mixture of what they are, or what I like in them, and my own desire of what I want them to be. It's it's, it's a little bit of both. So I suppose they will be a little, they will be a little bit surprised. Uh, they will recognize themselves, but with something a little bit added and some of the things that I subtract, subtracted. No, I add a little bit and I subtract another. And then the result is very similar to the original, but it's not exactly the same. Uh, it yeah. will be interesting. It will be interesting when you show the film in an audience that someone in the audience will come up to you and say. That person was my fa is my father. I haven't seen that person in years. <laughs> you know, it, this happened in yeah. film festivals. I've seen that happen. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and I want to ask one more question. That um, how long have you been living there? You live in there, or you, how long? For how long? With, in the shooting, you mean, or the whole process? Um, the whole process, including the, whole, the research. Yeah. The, the research, I started uh, visiting them 
something like three years before I started shooting. Like, like my first uh, approach uh, was three years before. I had seen the houses in the distance since I'm little, because uh, my family is one of those families who go in the summertime to the, to the village, uh, which is next to the national protected area. Uh, so since I'm, for many years ago, I've seen those little cabins in the distance, and I was curious, like, who the hell would live here, and uh, how's life here in this place? And this question has been in, in the head for a little while, and one day I decided to approach, knock on the door, and, and see who lives there. And, uh, and this, this might have happened something like three years before shooting. And then in the meantime, of course, I've been involved in other films and other projects, but each time I had a little bit of free time, and I, I would uh, go there and, and spend a few days, spend a few evenings with them, talking or in silence. They, they, sometimes they can be really comfortable with silence. They are not really talkative. And, uh, yeah, and something like that, three years, and trying to gain their confidence because they, are, they, because they, they don't socialize often, they're isolated, and they live in the margins of the legality. Actually, it's not uh, allowed for anybody to live inside a protected park, but for some reasons, the administration is doing like an ex exception with these four men that live there. They're, they are allowing them because the confrontation would be a little bit aggressive, because they don't really harm the, uh, the nature, they, they, they do very little impact to the, to the environment. No, their presence there doesn't really affect the huge uh, reserve. And because the administration, they know that whenever they pass away, that this man, whenever they pass away, they, there won't be future generations living in the same place. Uh, so they are like the end of a species and, uh, somehow. And, uh, and then the shooting was five weeks. First, we stopped. Uh, we, we went back to editing Mauro's film, Let's Go Ahead. A few months later, we went back and we shot another three weeks. And then uh, I edited the film. And when the edit was almost finished, I went back for a three-day shooting very quickly and very precise. Most of the time, the shooting, these eight weeks, first uh, five weeks and then later three weeks, it was more like, let's see what happens today. Sometimes I would bring an idea, like I would like this to happen and try to provocate or to, you know, or to, to push reality for things to happen. Some of the days we were more like passive, like let's see what, let's see what chance, the gifts, sometimes we are giving these gifts, you know, that the chance gives you a sequence and some of the days more active. But then at the very end, when the editing was almost finished, I felt I needed certain things and I went for a three-day shooting, more like a hunter in terms of the, you know, sometimes, it, sometimes we were like fishermen, no? like we throw the, the nets and let's see what we capture. And at the very end, we went like really looking for a specific, uh, sequences or actions. So in total, eight weeks and, and three days. Um, another question? Yes. Hi. Um, I would like to know um, what is the greatest difficulty you guys have while doing the film and how you overcome the difficulties? Yeah. The, the, the greatest difficulty, you say? Yeah. Well, there is one challenge, but it's not very interesting, which is funding the films. But that's not that uh, interesting. No, in that terms of, is uh, very interesting. <laughs> yes, we all we all want to talk about funding. Where do you find the money, right? <laughs> we 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 brought, we we write a lot of scripts that we know that we will never shoot. <laughs> in in terms of um, what what we present to get the funding, it's it's just in, in our imagination, and we know that later on. For example, Mauro wrote a script about the cargo ship even before being in the cargo so it's uh, no it's it's all a product of uh, imagination but you need to present something some text in order to to get the funding and once you get the money then then you do the film which has nothing to do with the well well nothing to do no it is of course it's related and actually when you write it's it's, it's like a first when you're writing the script it's like a first uh, it's, a, it's a first opportunity to try to visualize something, no? Of, 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 of try to turn your 
intuition into something concrete, specific, and you write some sequences and some things that you would like to happen, whatever. But of course, everything is so slow in time, in the time that it takes to get the funding, to, to get the crew, whatever, that the, the, the script gets old. It, it's out of date somehow when you are actually shooting the film and some things are more uh, relevant and interesting and you discover new things and, uh, and you are growing yourself in the process and coming from the first... Uh, when, I, uh, when I reach this place, at the beginning I have a, a kind of a romantic, naive uh, uh, view or gaze on, on the territory and, and of course by spending time with them and being there, it turned into something more complex and more rich in details and in, in subtle elements that I it would have been impossible to anticipate when I was writing. So, yeah, but the funding process is pretty much regional funds, national funds from the Ministry of Culture, eventually getting a television, uh, how do you say? A pre-sale, pre pre yeah. In the, pre case of, in the case of my film, it was regional funding, national funding, European funding by this institution called Media, uh, and a pre-sale to a Spanish um, television. So getting a little bit of amount of money from here and there, and finally we, we had enough to, to, to make the film. But that's, that is true that this is a difficulty, but uh, I think it's more <laughs> making the film the greatest difficulty. The greatest difficulty is the fact that, we sh that when we shoot, we don't have a safe, how do you say, a safety. Do you know the people in the circus? When you when they oh, walk the on net. the we yes. we don't have a safety net because we don't we don't know what's going to happen when when we shoot and we don't even have a topic I at least in my case I didn't know what I wanted to talk about with the film so I had a, I don't have like a a topic or a theme that will guide me all I have is I like these people I like the place I I like the sense of time in the place I like the sense of uh, I I like the energy of the place and I think he, I have the feeling that here. I have the ingredients to make a film, but I don't know about what. Actually, I wouldn't say about. I, I would say that the film is with. If someone asks me, what's your film about? They say, no, it's not about nothing. It's with these people that I found and with this territory and with this and with that. Uh, but I, I, I can't resume it into a, a topic. It's, a, it's a kind of uncomfortable for me to say that the film is about. So the difficulty is dealing with this uncertainty of not having a, a strong uh, topic or theme or concept that is guiding you. Instead, it's an intuition. And in, in the editing, you find yourself with a lot of rushes, a lot of material, which is kind of diverse and uh, spreads all around. And, it's, and then, then you write a film with images and sounds. And then you have to make this composition to shape this into a formal composition. And, and that's a big challenge. That, that in that, our case it takes a lot. That is sort of like a documentary film. This is how 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 yeah. documentary works, yeah. right? You go and shoot a lot of stuff. You come yeah. back, and then you compose the story. I want to add another question to that. Was shooting uh, uh, cinematography was difficult because you're shooting at the beach, where it's so bright the light, huh? And but then it's so beautifully shot, and I can see the detail of people's faces. You know, did you have to use the reflector a lot or fill light filling? Because there's no electricity there either, right? Yeah. They, they, they have their ways. Uh, they, they even they could have a motor, you oh, know, with motor. gasoline. That but but it's noisy yes. and and yeah, it's not good for for us for shooting. And they don't like to have it on either uh, because it's noisy and mm -hmm. this this place is more peaceful. And two of them, they, they got themselves a couple of solar uh, oh, panels. panels, yeah, and put them on. Uh, Ingenious. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, with a battery, and it's mm -hmm. it's working pretty good. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, but it was especially difficult because of the um, almost nearly uh, three hard, so well, no, ninety percent of the day we have a direct sun very from above, and it's very hard. There is nearly no there is no contrast and. Uh, this direction of the light is not so interesting sometimes, and and especially in this big uh, the the sun, uh, the extension of the sun is is it's quite under this light is quite regular, no? And it seems a kind of a white and it's a very and a very a huge uh, white uh, surface without a relief relief 
especially when the light comes from above and you have this extension of sun, uh, becomes a kind of mass with not uh, very a lot of interest. No? And it was a little bit hard to try to get uh, details and, and shapes in that uh, mass. No? But we, we try to, to use a lot, uh, well, no, to, to, to be very efficient in the beginning and the end of the day to, for having a lot of images uh, in that hours. And then a lot of times when the light was a little bit hard and, and, and strong, we, we work it a lot inside uh, the huts no, also. And we use it a little bit of, uh, we use it a lot of natural tools for, for controlling the light, uh, but simple, simple things are reflection and diffusion. And uh, we had uh, small lights also f that we connected. We never, we nearly not use them, but a little bit, no, sometimes, no? Maybe in the house. Fin no? fin finally, I'm nearly no. Uh, maybe in the inside the canvas house or. No, we were reflecting the, with reflecting? a mirror and a, yeah, we were most mostly. And the first uh, shooting, we then use the kino fluids a little bit, and, and, but simple things anyway. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, mix yeah. Of. And, and sound also was challenging too because you get the wind. And then that scene that you show us is beautiful. The sound was so crisp and so clear. I don't hear any wind at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. At the, at the same time, you don't have a lot of uh, noise from the... When you are close to the border of the park, you have more uh, noise from the small village. But at the end, at, at the same time, when you go a little bit farther in the park, mm -hmm. I think it's quite good for a sound man because there is really no, no sounds from the city or modern, modern towns. So. Mm. Um, I think we have time for one more question. Yes. Uh, well, I have two questions, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the first one is about the first film. Uh, it, not only, it, it not only uh, took me into a kind of experience, like you said, it also gave me a kind of imagination, like those people in the ship. I thought they were like, uh, j only the, the only group of people survived in, on the Earth after a disaster. And um, they have to be with the, they had to be with the big machines and they are isolated. Uh, and I, I'm wondering what kind of imagination do you have when you see your own creation, your own film? And the second question is, that I, I want to know the name of that beautiful song, because I was so moved by the lyrics, that was so beautiful. The sound of the karaoke, the, the one we listen... This, in the second clip, I mean the name of the song. Ah, in the, ah, in the, okay, in the, second, okay, in the other okay. film. Oh. Uh, but for the first question... Uh, you, can you repeat the end of the first question? You say the what the what what I feel when I see the film, or what I. What Do you I have tell? any kind of imagination about your what? about the world, about the human being in the future? I mean, because ah. you made a fictional film anyway. But a, a kind of imagination, um, imagination about what it going to happen. The world, or the human being in the future, or the. But in the future, in the future. Yeah. But I, I don't know. I don't. <laughs> I don't know. It's really. Sí. Sí, um, I don't know exactly what's going to happen in the future. I'm, I'm, uh, sometimes I'm, I am a little bit uh, negative and sceptic about... Uh, well, not, not sceptic, but I, I have the impression um, things are becoming really complicated and uh, there is something uh, in humans that can't... Uh, I wanted to do a film about uh, something that is... Uh, a part of us, no? Uh, we, a kind of uh, we are um, from the beginning of man in Earth. Maybe <laughs> I don't want to to sound pretentious. I have the impression men try to find a place to be uh, safe, no? But something essential is always escaping, no? And we are always we always need to transform and to control what we have around us for con for building a kind of um, place to be safe. But at the same time, something essential is always escaping, no? And we are always in movement, no? Um, I have been I, one of the reasons why I did this film is because I was, I was, I am traveling a lot because I work a lot as a DOP. I work for a lot of films as a DOP in several countries, and I like also also to travel a lot. And I was very surprised to see how how men have transformed completely everything, no, on Earth. And we are maybe the only uh, alive uh, uh, 
animal that uh, needs to transform everything all the time, no? And I wanted to do a film about this uh, strange characteristic, no, of humans who needs to transform everything, who who can never feel. Uh, we, I have the impression we we never feel satisfied, no? And uh, because also because of that, I'm not. I don't know what's going to happen, but uh, I think it's it's quite uh, for me. It's quite. Uh, it provokes me a lot of anguish, no? Anguish, and and uh, I think we can feel it in the film. No, it's dark and it's a little bit uh, anguish, but at the same time, it's also um, sometimes something something that was uh, uh, that has to be with me in that moment, no? I, that moment, it was a quite a quite uh, dark period of my life, and I, I, as I said before, is the, the strange encounter between yourself and the things that you are thinking in that time or you are feeling, and the things that are happening uh, in front of you. And uh, I, 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 I like it to push this uh, dark uh, side. It's not the reality. There are a lot of, there are a lot of nice things in the ship and, and much more lightful and nice uh, moments uh, that, that the things I show, uh, that we show in the film, no? But uh, in that moment, I, th I thought I have to, to push in that way and to do a film uh, that, that talks about that, no? But I don't know, I have any idea. I think uh, I have any idea about what could, what could happen uh, in the future, no? But, but uh, yes, uh, uh, when, we were, uh, when I was shooting and, we were when, and when we were editing, we wanted to recreate this impression of a spaceship uh, under the end of the wall. We don't know if they are, if they are the last uh, survivors or... Uh, Something like that, no? And yes, and we push it uh, in that side a lot, no? In this, in this uh, science fiction uh, impression, I think it was one of the. I, I'm not so agree with Manolo when he said uh, this uh, first script has nothing to be with uh, with a real film. I think it, at the end it's pretty close, strangely. Uh, the, the essence of the things we wrote yeah. is in the film, uh, but in a strange way, no? Because at the end, the film is is ourselves, and the things we write it at the beginning are not so far that the things that we find at the end, but maybe we find a way to, to put them in images, in a, in a cinematographic language. We find a way to put the, the things you feel and you, and you think in a cinematographic uh, way, no? And I think all this path is, is a little bit for that, no? Um, and in my case, I wrote, uh, for example, I, I wrote in, in, in the first versions of my scripts, I want to do a film uh, that's going to be a kind of documentary, even if I don't like uh, the label, but a kind of the documentary about um, an, a kind of science fiction documentary, no? Things that seem uh, contrary, contrarious. See how you can do a documentary about something that is a speculation about future. How you can mix this thing? And I thought, yes, maybe it's possible because we saw a lot of, a lot of times the ship, a kind of uh, speculation of the ship in fiction, but we never saw it in a real world, no? And I thought it, it, it I think it's, inter and it's, it's an interesting, interesting uh, way to work, no? Uh, we imagine it a lot of times how life could be in the future, but it's sure that someone from one century before, if he sees how we live today, he gonna think he's science fiction, no? Because the, the ship is already here and it's crazy how we live and we accept that as normal, but it's not, not, it's not normal, normal at all, no? And I think it was in my first uh, script that this idea, no? And at the end, the film is pretty close to this idea, also. No? Yeah, no, no, I meant more about the concrete uh, events happening uh, that you can't predict, and then you write uh, specul speculative uh, ideas. I so, so that at the end of the process, well, you, when you are when you you finish the film, you know, in in the moment. When when you suddenly <laughs> recognize uh, yourself in the, in the film, no, in a way, when after this long editing process, which takes a long, his both films took one year of editing, my my film too, and and at the end of the process, you you recognize yourself in the in the film in a way. It uh, oh, and you say, oh, what, what a long journey to get to myself. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Spending time researching, shooting, editing, and at the very end of the whole process. You see yourself somehow, no? It, uh, and uh, you recognize yourself, your own sensibility and your relationship to to, to life, yeah. somehow condensed in a in a film. And you, in the process, you you have something else in your back back patch in your. <laughs> back, back. I, I don't know yeah. the word. In, I mean, in, in the your... editing is a process of of selection of scenes and. 
putting the scenes together in such a way. And sometimes is very unconscious. Is your unconscious keep on coming up, and then you do things you don't know why you do it, but then it just feels right, yeah, right? And so, <laughs> so it's it's fantastic that way. Yeah. yeah. And in shooting is the same way too. Sometimes, right? Yeah. Where you place the camera, it and why did you why did you place the camera there? And why did you shoot keep on shooting? And instead of shutting off, you just keep on shooting as if you were anticipating something to happen, right? In, yeah. my, in my case, is uh, the, the the camera. And I think in addition, bueno, Manolo gonna say, will say his opinion about, about that. But for me, the camera is a way to 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 feel very present in the in the place. No, it's not all the time like that. But I, I have to record a lot when when the film let you do that because sometimes you are in more in a fiction way and you have to follow one script and and a, a day shooting program. But in these kind of films. You have a lot of time to explore and to sh to, gra to shot, and I shot, I shot, I shot until a moment some things start to happen in a way that you didn't expect, and you start to feel very present and concentrate, and uh, you start to start to have uh, perceptions, and I think you ha you start to synchronize with the thing that you have in front of you, the the your own energy, your own time, your own rhythm, start to understand what is happening for real in front of you. And you start to catch a kind of a truth of the of the things that you are uh, shooting, no? And I think you are always doing this uh, exercise between, no? And sometimes I, I say to my students, I see, if, I, they try to do a, a kind of intimate film, and there are more people beside the camera than in front of the camera. And they are very excited. They talk a lot, and it's strange how you how you gonna um, reach or how you gonna catch something uh, truth from that place if you are in that mode, no? And maybe in the editing process is a little bit the same. You have to to hold the, elect the, the electricity has to pass from the beginning to the end of the film. Sometimes you have the impression the electricity is passing, and sometimes there is not passing. And I think it's not passing when you are trying to apply something that is a little bit exterior. Exterior, um, from well, no, foreigner or uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, something something that you say that I think it's 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 funny that uh, in order to see sometimes you need to frame things, no? And it's uh, making a film uh, in a way is a is a way of fixing your attention to perceive things that other ways probably because reality is always very ambiguous and things spread all around and sometimes you need to frame in order to yeah fix your attention and actually see uh, otherwise you might not see <laughs> it's interesting you know, that you need to make the composition but about what you were saying before i think many of the things we do are unconscious like in a psychoanalysis uh, <laughs> event yes. you talk you talk you talk and suddenly one word oh, gives you a clue about the something no and uh, it happens in a very unconscious way and i think with the with the filmmaking too most mm, sometimes I had the feeling sometimes that that uh, my work as a as a director of my own film sometimes I felt that my work was not to be an obstacle, and uh, this is my task today or right now. My task is not to be an obstacle. No, and some other times, of course, I'm all over the place trying to organize things. I'm, I'm very often, I'm just a witness of something, and my role is to channel what I saw, and to channel it by not becoming an obstacle and finding the right way to this energy pass through yeah. and get to the film. And with the editing, some, some, sometimes, it's, sometimes the head goes first and the hand follows. Yeah. And, and that's not the... I, I think it works better when the hand goes with that direction mm -hmm. and suddenly you discover things, no? For, for really to discover things, it's, it's more, it's, I don't know, it's not a rational process but definitely you need to be working uh, when no whenever uh, who, who who say that was it Picasso yeah. that the, the inspiration uh, yeah. comes when you are work uh, you should be working for inspiration to catch you or to get to you and sometimes we get stuck too yeah of course okay. of course yeah. it's okay to get stuck <laughs> very often all right well thank you so much thank you i thank think you. i think thank you, very much. you know we owe them a big round of applause this is <laughs> thank you thank you <laughs>
coming up? There's two more screenings, and I, and I don't know the dates. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I do but know the dates. It's uh, tomorrow and then on the 22nd, but I can't remember the, the time. But, but we have programs out there, yeah. so I strongly urge you to uh, watch the film. It's very, very special. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.